We're old school here in Yorkshire. We don't like using some at once and then just chucking it away. Nay, we're used to getting as money's worth out of everything. And that includes content. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use old images to create fresh new content for your socials. And to prove this works for pretty much any business type, I'm going to make up two fictional businesses that have got nothing in common with one another. In this case, a jewellery business that sells iron bling and an American diner. If you think that sounds good, follow along and you can build it too. And if you can't be bothered, you can buy this scenario in my online shop for the cost of a day's parking in Centre of Leeds. Link in the description below. Right, no more dilly-dallying, let's get into it. Let me just show you what we're starting with. I've got a master folder here called the Amazing Image Based Content Creator folder. In here are two other folders, one for an American restaurant. That's got three random images in here. I'm just going to use three images for now because that's all we need for this demo. And uh, a jewellery store as well. Um, again, that's got three random different images in there. And as you can see, we have a Airtable base as well. We have two different tables in this. We have a client's table and an images table. The client's table is going to have um, a row for each of our individual clients, a bit of a description which we can put in about them. Um, and then it's going to have the images that they have uploaded into their folder and the ID of their client folder. Uh, we're going to have an images table as well, which and this is just going to have each individual image in it. Okay, let's see how we get the information in there. Remember, we have this here. We have these two clients here, and we're going to pull first the folders, i.e. the clients, into the table, and then the images, which are in each folder. Okay, let's see how we can do that. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make things dead easy for myself in the future. I'm going to set up a variable and that variable is just going to be called the top level clients folder. And this is basically just going to be this folder here, which will contain all of my different clients. And the bit that I want is up here in the URL. It's the last part. And I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to drop that in as my variable. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to search through our Google Drive and we are going to get all of the folders that are in that specific Google Drive. So the method that we're going to use, we're going to enter manually. The folder ID is going to be this one here. And what we're going to do is retrieve all of the folders. We'll put a limit of 100 on there for now. Obviously, don't need that. Um, but what we are going to do is now return all of those folders into our Airtable. So we need to, one at a time, we're going to iterate through the folders that we find. We're going to put the array as the file ID in here. And then we are going to add them to our Airtable. We are going to create a record in our Airtable for each client. So we need to obviously pick the right base, which in this case is my amazing image based content creator. And the table here is going to be the clients. So what we're going to do is we are going to put the client's name which is going to be the name of the file here. Obviously, I've just called them American Restaurant and Jewelry, but we'll just keep them as that for now. So we are going to put that in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually put the client folder ID in there as well. So the ID that comes back from here, because I actually want to store it um, in here locally. So we're going to search for those and we're going to update those in our Airtable, which currently is empty as you can see. So let's do that. Let's save that and run it once and just see what happens. Okay, we now have two records. We have our American restaurant and we have our jewelry company. We've got their client folder IDs in here. Now, obviously, we don't have anything else in here yet. Next, we need to pull the images from each. So we're now going to create a new scenario. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to pull our records from Airtable. So the first thing we want to do is search our Airtable records. In this case, obviously, we want to search for the each row of clients. So we're going to go to the clients table. 
we want to see the clients that don't have any images in there yet. So we're going to switch to grid view. We're going to output all of the different fields and we're going to go, the formula will be where images equals zero. And we're obviously not going to put quotation marks around this because that is an integer. Okay, so we're going to do that. If we were to run that, we'd obviously get um, our two return. There's our two bundles. There's the American restaurant and there is our jewelers. So we're going to iterate through each of these one at a time. So we'll put a, an iterator in place and we'll iterate through the each client name. I'm just going to set a couple of variables just to make it easier for you to see how this works. So we are going to set a few things. We're going to set the client name and the variable value is obviously going to be the client name here. And what else are we going to do? We're going to set the client um, record ID. And that is going to be the ID that comes back from our Airtable. And we are going to set the client folder ID. Uh, so that's the folder that they're in in Google Drive. Okay, so it'll just make it easier to get this information in just a moment. So we're iterating through each record. We've set our variables. We are going to now search through Google Drive again. And this time we're going to search for files inside of the specific folder. So what we're going to do is enter manually the folder ID of that particular client and we are going to retrieve all of the files and then we are going to iterate through each one of the files that we found. Uh, we'll just go via its file ID and then what we're going to do is I'm going to set some more variables. So we're just going to set this variable called image name. Okay, and then we are going to create a new record in our Airtable. What we're going to create this time are records into our images table. So the name of the image is going to come from this variable here. The folder ID is obviously going to come from this variable here, the one that we set earlier. We don't have an image description, we don't have a last used, but we are going to map that to a specific client. And obviously what we need now is the rec is the client's record ID. And that's why we took that from here. So we're just going to put that in there. And then if we run this, we should now get a nice list of our images into our Airtable here. So let's do that. Okay, so let's just see those populated. As we can see, we now have the folder IDs, we have the image names, and we have the clients that they're associated with. And if you go to the clients table, you'll now see the images are there under the images column. So everything's working as it should. We've got everything set up nicely and we're ready to go and start creating some crazy content. So as you can see, what I've done here is I've decided to rename my uh, clients. I've now called the American Diner the Stars and Stripes Diner, and I've given it a little bit of a description as well, just saying where it's based and what it is, classic American diner. And the jewellery store I've called Gemstones Galore, and we've put a bit more information into it, including where the retail store is and the URL where you can find their online shop, but a little bit of information about what they sell. Um, so you never know, we might be able to pull some of this information in automatically as well. What I'm going to do to begin with is just set some variables. So um, we're, we're just going to add the uh, client name in here. Okay, and we're going to be able to obviously put in whichever client we want now. Obviously, if you're doing this with multiple clients, you'd have some sort of input, could be a form. It could be just that you do it on a schedule, however, but for the purposes of this, what I want to do is pass a variable in. In this case, let's start with the Stars and Stripes Diner. So I'm going to give it that. What we are going to do is search through our Airtable until we find the reference to that particular client. So the, the field name is client name. 
So we'll use the grid view, we'll put all the output fields. We shall go to formula client name, and we're going to make that equal to our client name that we set there. And we need, do need to put that into quotation marks. And then we're gonna click okay. Um, we're obviously only going to limit this to one record because there's only gonna be one client called this but you don't need to change that particularly because it's only ever going to find the one. And then what we are going to do is we are going to get all of the images that are listed for this client. So that's obviously image called 1, 2 and 3 PNG. So let's just run that and just see what we get back. Okay, so we found a client record, the Stars and Stripes Diner. And we've obviously got our images here. So they're already listed. We don't need to do another search for them. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna iterate through that array of images. We're going to get the details of each individual image that we're passing through our iterator. So again, we're going to look up our Airtable and this time we're going to get a record and the record ID is obviously coming from the iterator. So let's pull that into our air table. So the record ID is going to be the value that comes from here. If we run that, we'll now be able to see that it's obviously got our different records. We've got now the image name, the folder ID, and the client that it's associated with, and we've got the record ID as well. And what we're going to do now is we are going to set some variables. Why? Because it just makes things a little bit tidier and easier to find things in the future. So I like to set variables at this point. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have the image name as one variable, and that is obviously going to come from this get a record. We've got the image name, and we also have the um, image folder. So that's the folder that it exists in. And we're going to have the, the images Airtable record ID. Okay. And that is obviously going to come from there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a search of Google, the, our Google Drive. So we're going to search for files and folders. In this case, we're going to enter it manually. We know that the folder ID is going to be set as this variable here. And what we're retrieving is files, and we are going to search within the file or folder names. And the query is going to be the image name. We're going to search for the exact term, and we're going to limit it to one record. So if we find that, then we are going to download it. And the file ID that we get is going to be the file ID that we pull from that search. So then from there, we're going to send that file into OpenAI's vision module, which analyzes images. So we'll click on OpenAI. We're going to analyze the images. And um, obviously, we're going to need a prompt for this now um, so that you don't have to watch me um, type it all out. I have actually created a prompt already. And that is going to be this one. So let's just break this up a little bit for you so you can see how this works. So I've got a task here, and, and I like to denote them with a couple of stars. It just helps the AI to separate the different parts of the prompt. So we're just going to say, analyze the image and describe in detail what you see. Output in natural language, and additionally output some short alt image text for the image and we are going to have some output guidelines as well. So we're gonna tell it to export in JSON format as below with no additional explanatory text. Follow the output example below for the structure of the JSON. Don't begin with this because sometimes it likes to helpfully tell you that it's JSON that it's giving you and don't end with this. Um, and then we're gonna give it an output example and the output example in this case is going to be these JSON key value pairs. So I have the key image description, um, I have the little colon, and then I have um, the long description of what you see in the image. So this is gonna basically tell it it's a string that it needs to return. And then we're gonna have um, another key called image alt text, 
and the colon and then the short alt text of the image. That's what I want it to return for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that because I'm going to need that in the next module. Now, then I'm going to add my images in that I downloaded from here. So we're going to do them one at a time and we're going to specify the image is going to be an image file that we're going to pass in and helpfully make already maps that to this file here. So I'm going to give it some uh, some tokens. I'm going to get 1500 tokens to work with. That'll be absolutely plenty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass through the JSON that gets returned because we obviously told it it must return as some JSON. So we're going to set up a pass module. We're going to create a structure and we're going to call this one um, pass image details and um, alt text. And because I've already specified what the JSON return needs to be from OpenAI, I can just click on this generate button and paste in that text that I'm sending to the prompt. Um, and if that's valid JSON and you click generate, it's going to create these um, key value pairs that we need. So we've got the image description, it's a type text, there's no default value, and we're going to require that. And then we're going to have the image alt text as a, val as a key, it's a type text, there's no default, and I'm going to make that required as well. Okay, so we're going to save that, and we're obviously going to pass the JSON string that we get back from OpenAI into here. In this case, we can just click on the result string and pass that in. That will hopefully now get us an analysis of our image. Okay, then we want to store that. So I'm going to set some variables again because I like to set variables for these sorts of things. So we're going to have the image description come back from OpenAI. I've spelt that wrong. And the variable is obviously going to be the output of this parser here. And we are going to have the image alt text. You don't really need to set these variables up, but I'm just doing it because it makes it easier to find everything later. And we are obviously going to OK that. Now, then we're going to store this information into our database. And I've actually set up a another column here called image alt text because I want to get that back as well. So we are going to then update our Airtable. So we're going to update the record by its ID and the record ID is obviously going to be the record that we pulled before and we know that the, it's here stored in this variable that we set earlier. So what we're now going to do is plonk in the image description which we've now got stored as a variable in our tools and the image alt text which we've got stored there as well. Okay, so hopefully all that should work. Okay, next we are going to send the image that we've just analyzed back to OpenAI and we're going to create our posts. Now what I've done is I have actually created three new columns in my images table uh, for Facebook post text, Instagram post text and Twitter post text. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to get the GPT to create three slightly different bits of text for each social media channel based on that image. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an open AI. We're going to create a completion. Um, I find this works best with GPT-4, so let's just use that. And we're going to add some messages here. So we're going to give it this prompt here, you are a highly skilled social media manager who creates compelling content for different social channels. And then we're going to create a, another role. This time it's going to be a user role. And this is where we're going to put our main part of our prompt. So let's just bob that in. Let me show you how I've structured mine. Um, for each different section, I've got these stars again. So the task summary first. I'm just telling it, you must come up with some post text which will be posted along with the image onto different social platforms. I'm going to tell it what inputs it's going to get, so a description of the image, the name of the client company, and some additional information about that client company. Um, there's a purpose and goal of the task, it's to showcase the client company. And then we've got the rules for the post text output. So what I want it to do is output in a strict JSON format, which I will show it in the output example below. 
Don't output any text other than the text that should appear on the post and make sure each social profile has slightly different text. I've then told it a number of words that it must not use in its output. And the reason for that is that, as we all know, if you've used OpenAI for a while, is it's got some words that it really does like. I've just thrown these in, but you can add more. And I mean, it loves using these words all the time. And it's a, a surefire way of spotting AI generated content. So then I'm going to tell it its output requirements. And what I'm telling it is it must structure it in the JSON string as shown below. Don't begin with this quotation mark JSON and don't end with the quotation marks like this. Because OpenAI has a habit of trying to be very helpful and telling you that a certain bit of output is JSON. Don't write any other explanatory text whatsoever because we don't want that to appear in our post. And only output the JSON as shown in the output example, which is here. So the output example is some more JSON. And let's just break this down. What I'm asking for is a posts and we're going to create an array. So each post has a key value pair called the first one is going to be the platform is going to be the key and the value is going to be Facebook and then there's going to be the post text and that's the text that is going to be used for the Facebook post and then we're going to have a, um, a new object which will be this time the platform will be Instagram and the post text will be the text that we're going to use for the Instagram post and then once again we'll have another platform this time Twitter and the post text for the Twitter post. So don't forget to close your array off at the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that text because I'm going to use that again to create my JSON parser like we did here before. But before I do that, I'm going to add yet another message. And this time it's going to be a user role. So remember, we're going to be passing certain things into it. Um, we're going to be passing a full description of the image, the name of the company and the additional information about the company. So we want to get that information obviously here. So we've got the um, image description is going to be this. We are going to have the name of the client company and that is going to come from back here we've got the client name here and we've also got the um, additional information about the client company and that is going to come from the client description here okay so we've now set up our system role and two user roles one user role explaining what it's going to do and another user role giving us the inputs okay so we're going to give it some max tokens for this let's give it another 1500 tokens that should be plenty so we know the output's going to come back in json format so we're obviously going to need to pass that so i'm going to create a new json parser and because I copied the, um, the JSON structure from in here before, I can now just create a new parser here. Let's call it uh, parse social media posts. And we're going to generate some new sample data. We'll just post that into there and click generate. And it's got us our JSON format. So we're going to have post. That's an array which is going to contain the following information, the platform and the post text for each platform. Okay, so we can just save that. And obviously we're going to now pass in the string, which will be the result of this OpenAI completion here. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to set some variables that come back from OpenAI. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, set a variable for the Facebook post. We're going to set a variable for the Instagram post. And we're going to set a variable for the Twitter post that comes back from OpenAI. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a map function, which is an array function. You can find that up here in this little array item here. We're going to use map. So we're going to bring this in and 
what we're going to do is we're going to map through a complex array. In this case, the complex array is going to be the return um, that we get from the JSON. So this is going to be an array. And what we actually want to get is a couple of specific things. We want to get the post text where the platform equals Facebook. A little thing here, you might be tempted to start pulling these into here, but if you do that, it might not work for you. Um, and this is because it uses dot notation. So what we actually want to do is just hover over where it says post text here, and we want to get what the raw dot notation is. And we can just copy that post text, or you can just type it in. So what I'm going to get is by mapping through the posts array, I want to get the post text um, where the platform equals Facebook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another semicolon here. So I want to get the post text where the platform equals Facebook. Now, why have I typed those in? Again, it's to do with the dot notation. If you hover over platform, you'll get the raw, that's the raw name that you need to use. In this case, we're going to then get Facebook. I know that when I returned the JSON, I've told it that it must use this lowercase form here. So, um, I now know that we're going to pull that post text where the platform value is Facebook. And I can now just copy that and I can put that into my Insta one and then just change the return name. So that will be Instagram. So pull the post text where the platform equals Instagram. And I can do the same for the Twitter post. So pull the post text where the platform is Twitter. And then I can store that, and now I can save all of that data into my Airtable. So we are going to update a record again, and this time we are obviously going to update the images table, and we are going to update the record that we set before. So we set it in these tools here, the image Airtable record ID, we'll put it in there. And now all we're going to do is we're going to map in the variables that we have stored here. So the Facebook post will go in there, the Instagram post there, and the Twitter post there. That should pull all of our text in to our Airtable. Okay, so let's have a look at our table. At the moment, we've obviously got our images in there. We've got the clients that they are, but we've got no description, no image alt text, and we've now got these columns to fill in as well. And this whole scenario should do the whole thing for us. Let's just save it up, and then let's run it and see what happens. Here we go. So right now it's sending the first image to OpenAI for analysis. And in a moment it will have done that. Okay, it's created some JSON. Let's just have a look at the structure of that. Yeah, as we can see, we've now got a um, some JSON string that went in and a nice image description and alt text that came out of it. We then updated our record. Let's have a look at that. Okay, we've now got our image description in here. That is a pretty good image description um, just from an image. We've got the image alt text as well, which is a bit shorter. It just says what a wooden board with barbecue ribs, a side of fries, grilled pineapple slice, extra barbecue sauce, and a fresh salad. Great image alt text, maybe a bit long, but we could always change that. And you can see these as it's going through all of these different images now, it's creating this. But let's have a look, see if it's created as our uh, social media text as well. Okay, oh my goodness, there we are. Let's have a look at the first one, the Facebook post. That is pretty good. Nothing says comfort quite like our succulent barbecued ribs. And it's even put some emojis in there. So with the tangy grilled pineapple golden fries and a crisp side salad, blah, 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 blah. Join us at Stars and Stripes Diner for a taste of classic American cuisine right here in Yorkshire. Lovely. Let's have a look at the Instagram one. And yeah, different text. It's even got some tags for us as well. That's very handy. And the Twitter one. Let's have a look at that. Oh, how wonderful is that? Again, different text. It's got some nice tags and it's even put some emojis in as well. And it's done it all for our different 
images so brilliant this one's really picked up on the decor which is really interesting so superb these are just absolutely brilliant and they will be perfect for automatically pushing out onto our social media so that's it done for our stars and stripes diner obviously now we want to do it for our jewel restore so we can see what's different so we're just going to pass the client name in here just make sure it's exactly right this is gemstone galore obviously if you're doing this for lots of clients you'd be automating the whole process of course so this time the only thing we're changing is the variable value right at the beginning we're going to just make sure it's gemstone galore and um, we're going to save that and we're going to run it and just see what happens this time okay so passing the images into gpt doing the analysis, getting our JSON, updating the record. Let's have a look at that update that we've got so far in our this one here. So this one here, this A, I actually named them um, just sort of random things just to prove that it really wasn't taking anything from the name. Let's have a look at ABC123. Um, that's this one here. It's this nice image of this woman with this very fancy looking chain around her neck. And let's just see what it comes up with as the description for that one. So there's this one here. Brilliant. Okay, yes, it's got really, really good data there. Let's have a look at the next one. That's this one here, a bit more of a close-up with these absolutely gigantic um, diamond-encrusted earrings. Uh, let's see what it pulled up for this. This is this image here. A close-up of a woman with glamorous makeup, uh, blah, 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 blah. And it's really pulled out these tear uh, teardrop-shaped earrings. Um, okay, it's even talked about the lighting with these effects. That's absolutely brilliant. It's got the image text. Let's have a look at the Facebook post text. Um, what have we got here? This is for the uh, the big earrings one absolutely brilliant it's picked up about our leads store which we have in our client description and it's pulled out the important information about the url as well that is absolutely brilliant so there you go that's how it's done you can then add on the steps that you want to push each post out to your buffer or your hoop suite or whatever it is that you use to automatically get your uh, post onto your social media channel but that's effectively doing the job of a social media content manager in 15 steps um, just from individual images so you can go back through your entire content library and create loads of content from the images that you already have how superb is that if you enjoyed this video please do drop a like and do post a comment because it really helps get this video seen by more and more people if you enjoy the sort of content that i make please do click the subscribe button if you'd like to hire me to create automations for your business that will save you loads and loads of time and money you can find all that information in the link tree in the description of this video for now hope you've enjoyed this and once again ta-ra from yorkshire